Danny Flexen here for seconds out with John Pegg, or Peggy, I think he's known with it throughout the boxing community. Known as lots of things throughout the boxing community. I'm, I'm only some of which we can say on camera here. Yeah. Just tell us who you're here with ahead of the Royal Albert Hall show weigh-in. I'm here with uh, Indy Sanger fighting Lucian Reed. Uh, just come down to get his, get his weight done today. It's his first time on a big show, so he's looking forward to it. Do you want to jump in on this, Indy? So it's a big fight for you, as we've said, Lucian Reed. Um, I think things didn't go your way last time out, is that right? Was that your first defeat? What, how, what have you learned from that process? I've learned um, experience, um, how to really live the, live the life and um, really just go out and do it and perform to my best ability in which experience comes with. So it's, it's kind of a bit of a mind game, but that's how we live, so that's what I do. What do you make of Lucian Reed, John? Very good fighter, um, you know, well schooled, boxer West Ham. Uh, maybe a little bit inactive, but you know, but our lads all they all come to fight. Indy's been finding it hard to get fights locally, even though he had a defeat. Still, nobody wants to fight him locally. So when this come up, he jumped to the chance. He wants to show what he can do. He's only 22, and he did learn a lot uh, before his last fight. I think Indy thought boxing was all about the stuff outside the ring. He's kind of realised now it's all about the stuff inside the ring. So, you know. As, as I always do when I bring a lad down away from home, we're hoping to put up a good performance, show what we're all about and pull off the upset. And Indy, what's the mindset like for you going into something like this? Because you're not expected to win, you're the underdog. He's the house fighter as well. So is that all the pressure off you? No, I think that, um, that makes me more motivated in a way. But um, yeah, I, th I, think, I think that's what I live for and that's what I got into boxing for is to be in big fights. So I don't shy out for um, occasions such as this. John, another big night coming up, obviously, on the 30th of April for your man, Sam Eggington. Yep. He's going to be fighting Liam Smith in the main event. It's kind of a, so young to say this, but it's kind of a crossroads clash for Sam. Two fights removed from the upset defeat against Muin yeah, yeah. Liam Smith's obviously the favourite going in. Yep. We're talking off camera, but just tell us what's Sam's mindset like and how's he been looking in the gym? Do you know what? Sam's been looking the same as usual, except for the fact that like middle life's a lot easier in every aspect. And you know what, Sam thrives on being the guy who's not meant to win. All his best performances have been in those occasions. Denton Vassell, Frankie Gavin, Malik Nagy, even the European title. He wasn't meant to win and he, and he, and he thrived. The fights where people were saying, oh, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, uh, such as the European defence, the Macimano fight, even Bradley Skeets, a lot of people had him as the favourite. And he hasn't performed. He says it's a lot of pressure for him to be the favourite. He says when everyone writes him off, he just does what he does best. And it's crazy because he's just 25 and this is probably his third or fourth fight where if he loses, that's the end of his career. So you know what, and he's won most of those ones, but he's even lost them before. And we, when you're as exciting as Sam and put it all on the line, people want to see you. But he's ready to go. He's enjoying being a light middle, like I couldn't believe. Like He's, he's like a happy person in the gym. As a welter, he wasn't happy in the gym. He was all, he'd do his job because he had to do it to make welter. But you know, he's, he's enjoying himself and we can't wait to get in there because when he does what he's capable of, he's back higher than he's ever been. And like, you know, I said this, I quoted Matthew Macklin, he says, the worst thing about boxing is you're only as good as your last fight. But the best thing about boxing, you're only as good as your last fight. So we can go from, oh, it's all over and he's all done to higher than he's ever been. And one thing I do have to ask you, after that defeat that Sam suffered, there was talk about him potentially going to a different gym. I know he yeah. trialled a couple as well. Yeah, yeah. What, what did you think about that at the time? And you're obviously glad he's decided to stay where he is. I told him to go. I says, go and try it out. I says, you know, I says, the reason if I says to you, don't do it, because I'm still, I was still, he wanted me to stay his manager. Uh, I says, go and try. I says, you need to know. I says, if you find something better, I'm happy for you. I want you to be as good as you can. I says, I don't know if you will. I says, you go, what will suit you? Because I know what Sam's like. So we went off, stayed in contact. A couple of weeks later, he rung me up, he says, there's no difference to what I'm getting at home. He says, people are talking. He says, well, it's no different. He says, I've just, I've got to travel. And he's, you know, Sam's a very family man. He says, I don't know if that'll make me a better fighter being away. He says, I, you know, I think it'll make me, you know, I won't like it. And because there was no conflict or anything, and I actively says to him, you go and find out. I says, if you find what you, you think you need, I says, I'm happy. I said, if you don't, I says, it, it's like water under the bridge, no problem. Like I say, two weeks, he rung me up and, you know, anyone who stops a boxer from trying to look He's doing it for their own reasons, and then you're not being a good trainer. Because to make that boxer as best as you can, you've got to give him every opportunity. If you and show him that the grass isn't always greener, I guess. Well, 
if that's the case, then it's made him a better boxer because then he's not sitting in the gym wondering, isn't he? So you've got to allow that to make him that better boxer. If you don't allow that, you're doing it for your own reasons and it won't work anyway. So, you know. Indy, are you quite friendly with Sam? Yeah, um, we trained quite a lot. I train with every fighter that's in the gym. Um, I'm a friendly guy. I, don't, I just do my training, that's it. How inspiring is it to have someone like Sam there who's got to a top European level and, and kind of on the fringes of world class? It's very inspiring because that, that was the reason why I started boxing is to obviously get into big fights but to see that go to a gym where there's a fighter that's got all these titles it made me more motivated at the same time it made us both more motivated and better people. And just before I let you guys go, Indy, the, there's people out there that might want to follow your journey. Just tell us where they can find you on social media. Um, I haven't really got social media. Just Twitter, Twitter, Indy Official, uh, Indy UK. Brilliant. I ain't got Instagram or nothing like that. Well, Twitter's good. I think people will follow you on Twitter. And professional, I like that. Right, brilliant. Well, we thank you both for your time and best of luck, obviously, tomorrow night. Thanks, Danny. Thank you.